Our summer season has been for adventuring and being outside in the sun till dusk. It's been a few weeks since we actually opened curriculum. Rather, we're learning through our reading, living, playing, basically unschooling. Anyway, I set up a math invitation for the littles and piggybacking off of my last video, the loose parts video, I thought I'd share it with you. Before I get started with the details, I wanted to note that this setup is for about four to five days, which at that point the kids have lost interest. So I either rotate resources or make a complete new setup. Okay, so this is a Montessori hundreds board I purchased on Amazon for under $15. And we use it for all sorts of math practice. Uh, in kindergarten, we count to 100. Uh, Bella is currently counting backwards from 100. Uh, she skipped counting by twos and fives and tens. We also play a game of can you find the number? Uh, I laminated this sheet and the back side is blank and this does uh, come with little wooden number tiles as well. You'll also see that I have our Grapat Mandala pieces spread out to use as math manipulatives. This is an addition and subtraction board I quickly made with a piece of cardboard and marker and to pair with the Grapat pieces and these number blocks which are wedding table numbers. The same with these small wooden pieces, they're meant to hold place cards or table numbers, just wedding decor and we use them as loose parts and also to hold nature table cards, flash cards and vocabulary cards. I mentioned these pattern cards in my loose parts video and I'll link the Etsy shop again in the description box of this video. These are to be used with the Grapata Mandala pieces for patterns. Next, I set up an activity or a practice area for one-to-one -one correspondence and number quantity. Again, using these number blocks and these watercolor glass jars that go into the wooden holder. But today, I used it to display and organize our loose parts for this activity. I also put out our tongs uh, to double up as a fine motor exercise. And I have uh, more blocks here towards the back to rotate the numbers. This organizer uh, stores our smaller loose parts and is actually meant for storing tea. I'll link it below. And these 3D wooden shapes are from one of our The Good and the Beautiful Math Activity boxes. Noah is super curious about 3D shapes, so I displayed them so that we can discuss them further, uh, discuss their names, their sides, points, and we even have flashcards that we can match them to. Here I have toothpicks and they are great for stem building activities, uh, for making tallies, and Luna also enjoys creating 2D shapes with them. This is a foam die from Dollar Tree, also for so many math activities and games. I put it out to use with our bucket scale. Uh, so we roll it and let's say it lands on three. We choose two different loose parts to compare. So for example, which do you think weighs more? Three blue coins or three stones? Our bucket balance is by learning resources. It's a good beginner balance. We can measure liquids in the buckets and there are also these little weights uh, that we can adjust and it's one of our favorite unschooling math tools. A Sporn Adding and Subtracting Activity Book, a gift from a friend for Bella, and this is new to us. Uh, Bella is just starting to make her way through it. It gets harder as you progress through the book, so I would say early first grade through maybe late second, maybe even early third grade. It's colorful and nice quality as most Usborn uh, resources are. 
The Grapes of Math by Greg Tang and Scholastic, a math riddle book. And I believe that I've shared this in detail already in a previous video. Uh, but to summarize, the riddles are kid-friendly, they're silly, the illustrations are fun. It reads, the grapes of math teaches four important lessons in problem solving. The first is to be open-minded. Children will learn to look beyond the obvious in search of smarter solutions. Next is thinking strategically, saving time by using a variety of skills when solving addition and subtraction problems, and lastly, learning to organize information. These blocks are from a much larger set, the Grimm's Large Stepped Pyramid. Here I have them displayed just as a visual for size sequence, but it's another open-ended material that can be used in all sorts of math exercises. We use them for numeracy as each size block equals a number. The tape measure is one of our favorite tools um, for math and so is Domino's, a favorite math game. So these two items are from the Good and the Beautiful Math Activity Box, but of course you can definitely find these tools at Dollar Tree. This wooden wreck and wreck uh, is also from one of the Good and the Beautiful Math Activity Boxes. It is similar and used uh, just as a regular abacus. We have two resources here for telling time, and this clock is from the Good and the Beautiful Math Activity Box, and I put it out to use with Telling Time by Jules Older. This is a wonderful picture book for introducing time. I bought Noah a wristwatch, and so he's super curious and interested in learning more about time. This book covers on why we tell time, when things happen, how long things take, for example, like brushing our teeth or making our bed. Um, it also covers uh, from a month to a year's time, so it touches on the calendar, and it even goes to a decade, century, and a millennium. And then, of course, the basics of how to tell time on an analog and digital clock. And lastly, King Maximo and the Number Knights. And I have shared this book also in the past. It's a story about numeracy. So King Maximo's question is, which is the greatest number of all numbers? So he sends some of his best knights, 12 to be exact, uh, on a quest to find out. And when they return, they each present the king with the number they believe to be the greatest. Uh, for example, Sir Owen believes that uh, the number one is the greatest. So each knight uh, says a number riddle, and the next day each knight is presented with a coat of arms or a shield to represent that number. So basically introducing numeracy 1 through 12 through storytelling. And so here is another example of a shield, and this is for Sir Four Square. So I made peg dolls for each night, uh, and I made them for Noah's pre-K year, and so now he's passing them down to his baby sister. I hope that you were able to note some ideas from our math invitation. I feel like there's such a false idea that math needs to be dry and out of a textbook, and that is totally wrong. Math is living. It's everywhere, all around us, and it can be fun. It's in the garden, in the kitchen, in a book, it's during play. Speaking in all honesty here, I don't think that we've ever finished a math curriculum from cover to cover uh, because, again, just math is all around us. And so that is our favorite approach, at least for the younger years. I'm actually thinking about putting together a video on how we learn math with block play, which is a popular concept, but I'm not sure if that's actually a popular interest. So let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see that. Please don't forget to like this video. It helps us out a lot and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, we appreciate your love. Thank you.